Good morning and welcome. So in the second video I added an orange colored wake behind our player as it moved. I called that video ripples, but since language is hard, I used the wrong word. It's really a wake. Um, in preparation for this video, our fourth one, I wrote a couple prototypes that showed me that a wake is just going to add too much clutter to the game screen. Um, even I got confused as to what was going on and couldn't really see a clear path forward to making the gameplay uh, intuitive. So originally I had thought about making the wake a core feature of the gameplay, where you had to push objects off the screen using the wake behind your, behind your player as it moved, um, but I don't really see a way to make that work right now in terms of making it both visually appealing and intuitive given that when you change directions, you've got a bunch of dots going all over the place and uh, it'd be very confusing. So the wake lines would overlap and, you know, be left wondering how to make these things move off screen using the wake. So sorry for all that rambling, but yeah, I will probably revisit ripples and wake animations and stuff later as I design future levels of the game and see if I can fit it in still a concept I'd like to make work somehow. But for now, what I think I'm going to do is do something a little more traditional where one, I want to make the player have some velocity. So you push an arrow key and the player keeps moving in that direction. Number two, I'm thinking of still want to move objects off screen and that would make it more like a traditional marble bump game where there's other dots on the screen and your goal is to push them off the grid in as few moves or as quickly as possible. So we're going to see how that goes. Um, so for now, first let's make the player movement less tedious and then we'll work on collisions so the player can push things off screen. Um, to do that, let's unfortunately get rid of the trails. So bye-bye <laughs> all of this stuff. Um, yeah, that's all right though. Let's just start over there. And the way that I think I'm going to keep track of this velocity and direction is by having a few adding a few keys to the player object and um, copy those in. So basically direction, velocity, and the movement countdown. So originally I thought about making it traditional physics based where you have a velocity in the X and Y direction, but that's just too confusing. And honestly, I don't want, if you change directions, I want the velocity in that old direction to go away entirely. Um, got a couple other snippets that we'll get to in a bit. So no more scene history, but we do have dots that will, other targets that we will collide with in the future. All right, so when you press a key, I want to store the direction that the player is now going in. Uh, that'll just make it easier instead of like trying to keep an X or Y um, velocity separately. It's just easier just to store direction for right now. And we'll key off of direction when we do update. So actually, let's kind of copy that in up here. So when we do our movement, we'll do that. We'll also use a clamp in here. Okay, so when we do a key press, we will store the direction and probably, so here's what I'm thinking is the, the default speed be um, one dot per, let's just say four frames of game animation. And 
So every time you change direction, hmm, actually that probably should be that. And I'll get rid of these. Okay. Again, yeah, I've kind of thought through this. That way I'm not boring you with a whole bunch of thinking on the spot. Um, so when you change direction, the movement countdown goes to zero. And the movement countdown, the whole point is um, if player has a direction, it's not zero. And um, player to movement countdown is zero. Then we're going to calculate movement. So let's copy this. And my good friend Ryan, actually, that I want this to be match case. Nice. Ryan taught me about control D. So um, direction is up, then we'll go that way, and I'll clamp to the grid boundaries later because we want to clamp after we adjust positions for collisions, so we don't want to do that too early. All right, the player is moving up, then we will actually I probably should uh, fix that later. Okay, the player is moving up, we'll do So I was thinking it needs to be that. Okay. And then these are tentative directions, so I'm not going to store them in the player object yet. Okay. So direction is up. We will adjust the player's y coordinates and then x coordinates if it's left or right. And let's see here. Let's go ahead and do. this to keep it simple and we will clamp oh no that's not what i want i didn't know there was a built-in clamp function but i've never seen it before let's see Nothing up here <laughs> what why did i do this the old school way it's so weird hey okay that's a little, a little more um Less surprising. Okay, player dot x, and we're going to clamp it to zero and twenty-three. Not one, two, three. Okay. Right. Only if there's motion do we need to do a clamp, or only if there's a collision, really. Um. Okay. If See if player has a direction. Actually, I probably should do um, what I really want is this, and then oh, come on, typey. We will um, decrement the movement countdown. Let's see what this should do. It um, right once we adjust the player position, then I need to reset the movement countdown to speed so that it can decrement further. Um, now there's no way for the player to stop at the moment, so I'll need to do some direction comparisons in here, but that's okay. Um, hmm, actually, that's an interesting point. Oh well, let's see what happens. Probably nothing. Okay. Cool. That's what I hoped for. And it's gonna get clamped and then go off screen. That's funny. Hmm. I wonder what that crash was about. Negative one. Why did it not clamp it to? 
I don't know what it's at this point. <laughs> oh, maybe my clamp, yeah, my <laughs> clamp returns, it doesn't. Hello! Doesn't assign in place, cause, yeah. Cause hey, no pointers. All right, we are 10 minutes in, so I'm gonna try to get something. Let's check this. Okay, I'm pressing, pressing repeatedly does make you go faster, all because we set the movement count down to zero. That's funny though. Oh well, that's a little quirk of gameplay, I guess. 10 minutes in and I still haven't got to collisions. Let's try to do that real quick. So, um, I think I have some other targets up here, actually. Just copy the player target. Where's it at? Here we go. Targets. There. We'll do this one at, I don't know, 25. And it is stationary, so we will not have it move at all. And once I update the tentative position here, I wonder if I need to clamp it yet. Probably not. Um, test for collisions. All right, so. Since I always second guess myself. Okay, so target in there is doing by index. I'm sure I can do a for each, but we'll just do it this way. Yeah, okay, that's what I wanted. All right, so the collision test I want to do. Um, it's just this simple function here, compares x and y. Uh, not there, no, 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 up here, there we go. All right, so if collision with target from our tentative player x and y position, then we will likely transfer the velocity and bump the target that was collided with. So I do have a transfer movement function here that we'll just drop in. I may need to tweak it a little bit, but. Okay, now the problem is transfer movement. No, it's fine. It just copies in direction and stuff. Okay. Let's remove movements from player to target. And this will copy in the player's direction to the, the target. So basically, the player will collide with the dot, and the dot will take all of the player's um, speed and will take the player's direction. And then set the player to zero and basically stop. So let's see what happens there. I'll print out that. This will actually be before the player's position is adjusted, but we'll just see what happens. Right, I need a target. Gotta show some other targets here. That's not what I want. That's what I want. We'll do red. Pretty sure we have a red in here. Nope. Um, oh, right. I did 25 was out of bounds. That makes sense. 
20 shouldn't be, and there we go. Okay. Okay, so that didn't transfer. <laughs> oh, I'm not actually updating the target positions now. I'm or I'm not doing target motion uh, like this stuff here. Yeah, I need to do this a little bit better um, for now. Let's just copy. <laughs> This um, actually I need to copy it into there. For all those guys. All right, so <clears throat> we will, yeah, we'll do collision with other targets later, but for now. We'll just um, change all these to target and make sure that's what we want. All right, looping over the targets, if they have a direction, which it should now, and the movement countdown should be zero after the collision. Then we will set the tentative X and Y position Actually, this, yeah, this should update the position right after the collision. Clamp it to the boundaries, which we don't actually want to do. We want to don't clamp. Um, then let's see, reset the movement countdown so it keeps moving. Decrement it at this point and then do that. So let's see what we get. Actually looks pretty nice. So if the player stops there, at x20, let's do the other one at y15. So once I bump, I can change direction and knock the other one off. Cool. That's not so bad, really. I do one more. And maybe next video we can do collisions between them. That'd be pretty cool. Let's do this one at 20. All right. Right. I gotta keep moving. Should I, does it clamp me? Good. Pop that one up. Can move faster if I Repeatedly press. Oh, interesting. Oh, it didn't let me. Oh, right, because the <laughs> I got in front of the dot, and then um, the dot was still moving, and it didn't test for a collision with me. Because, yeah, I moved first, and then it uh, didn't <laughs> test for a collision with me here. Yeah, okay. Once I add dot to other thing collisions, we can uh, have it where I can bump a dot back and forth. That would be pretty neat. Okay, I think that's enough for now. Um, you can probably hear my cat wanting to leave my office now. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully this was a little interesting, even though I was deleting a bunch of code and muddling through some new stuff. Um, cool. Thanks for watching.